Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you don't mind if uh, we just get a little comfortable because uh, now is the time for us to tell you just a couple of things that we think is pretty pertinent, that are pretty pertinent, and uh, it's educating the people to muscular dystrophy. This is a disease that about three and a half years ago very few people knew about, I suppose because of lack of funds and there was no possible chance of them ever publicizing the dread disease and just what it does. But it's a disease that they don't know about, they don't know where it comes from, they don't know what to do about it when it does arrive, and the only thing that these kids want is hope. Now, Dean and I have played many, many cities throughout the country, and whenever we meet a muscular dystrophy victim, all he ever asks of Dean and I is a little hope. If we could do something to give them kind of something to think about or look forward to. But the most amazing thing with this disease that kind of scares both Dean and myself is when we sat with the research analysts in New York and they told us if there was a certain amount of money raised and the certain amount is $9 million, they could take the disease and wipe it off the face of the earth in a matter of three months' time. That's pretty frightening, but it's true. The reason for that, so that you understand, is so that they can take the $9 million and buy that much radium to work in research to fight muscular dystrophy. If you ladies and gentlemen understand and realize how genuinely profound Dean and I are to help these children, you'll put what you can into these envelopes and let the postman pick it up and don't make his march for mercy one in vain. And that's what I do every Labor Day. I come to you people and say, please call, please pledge, help me. When I get that, and then I get the corporate, and I get the year-round work on the behalf of hundreds of thousands of volunteers, we are destined to find the cure. I will not quit until then. If we don't make it by the time I have to go to rest, at least we have established a set of circumstances that will be staggeringly wonderful down the pike. I have to think in terms of Tuesday. But if it doesn't happen then, my expectations are not buried, I dream some more. And if my kids can hope, and if they can dream, and if they can imagine that this audience is calling up because they want to help them, their lives are better already. And it's because of you people that put that number up there. That's going to be 49 in a minute, and I'll go with a shock. That we shouldn't have 20 million on that number. Maybe 40. Maybe nothing. With this downturn, if I listened to everyone that talked to me, I'd have been home tonight. I will be here as long as I breathe because I believe so strongly that children are entitled to that dedication. Okay. <laughs>